This video's lesson is about conservation of momentum. The first conservation law that we learned about was the conservation of energy. The problem with the conservation of energy is that trying to track all of the energy losses can be difficult. We tried to do that with work done by friction, but unfortunately in some instances it's just really hard to find out where all the energy went, at least in terms of mathematically how to put that into the conservation of energy equation. Conservation of momentum is a lot easier. Conservation of momentum is always concerned Conserved. And we say that energy is not always conserved because of deformation and sound and heat energy. It's just a way of saying we mathematically have a difficult time accounting for it. It's hard to add all those parts up. It's just not an easy thing to do. So conservation of momentum in this example here with the billiard balls, we have three different pictures here. The white billiard ball A is moving at some velocity, which we call V1. It has some mass M1. Billiard ball B, the red one, is sitting here at zero. If ball A and ball B have the same mass, when the white ball hits the red ball, they will hit perfectly, and all of the momentum will be transferred to the red ball, which means that the red ball will travel off at the same speed that the white ball had in the beginning. So we say that M1V1 is equal to M2V2. The white ball will come to a stop. Now obviously if the masses are not identical, the white ball may not come to a stop, but the idea is here this is a perfect situation. Another instance of this is the girls here on the inline skates. Now these girls are different masses. They're going to push against each other. But they're going to push for the same force for the same amount of time. One girl is slightly smaller than the other. But they're going to go off in one direction towards the left. The, the larger girl will go off towards the right. So they're going to have slightly different velocities. This is what I call an explosion type of interaction where both things are together at the beginning and then they're apart at the very end. The basic way to write conservation of momentum is PI is equal to PF, but I think we can all agree that that's not super helpful to us. We can expand that out. So in the case of the billiard balls, M1, VI1, the initial speed of mass 1. And then you have mass 2 with its initial speed. Notice how I'm labeling these very, very carefully because we've got to keep track of each object and then their initial and final states. So this is when the billiard balls or the objects are moving independently of each other. But what happens if they don't move independently of each other? Let's take a look at two different situations. You, you saw the example of the explosion. How about something where they stick together? So imagine like a car crash or two clay balls that when they hit, they will stick together. How do we account for those? So the sticking together before the collision, they are independent objects and after the collision, they have merged together. So after the collision, both objects are gonna have the same VF. So there is no V1 or V2, there's only one final velocity. And notice how I have both masses sticking together. So both masses are applied together. Now an explosion is exactly the opposite of that. Both masses are together at the beginning, just like the girls on the inline skates. They have the same initial velocity. So there is no V1, V2, it's the same velocity. In the case of the girls on the skates, it was zero. They're going to fly apart, these two objects are, and so each one will have a final velocity. And those velocities will be opposite of each other. Let's see if we can apply this to a situation. So here we have, uh, this is sample problem D in your textbook on page 208. So if you want to get out your PDF and take a look at this. Now uh, here's a boater, and they're stepping off of the boat onto a dock. And the picture shows you that the boater is going to the right at 2.5 meters per second. And obviously the boat is going to have recoil because the person is pushing against the boat with their foot. That force is pointing to the left, so the boat is going to go back to the left. So we're going to attempt to account for that using conservation of momentum. We're going to find out what's the final velocity of the boat. So the, the important part is let's figure out which form of the conservation equation are we going to use. And I think the best form is the explosion form. I mean, you can always get by by using, you know, this form right here at the beginning. And let's see if we can work on this. So both objects are together at the same time. So we have M1 plus M2 all together. Now what's the speed of the boater and the boat at the beginning? Well the speed, the initial speed of the boater and the boat is zero because they're not moving. At the end, we'll say M1 is the person. We could even label that differently. We could call it MP for person and M2, MB for boat. So let's say the person M1 times their final speed, one, plus the mass of the boat, M2, times the final speed of the boat. Now it's just a matter of plugging numbers in. The mass of the person was 76. The mass of the boat is 45. And that's going to be multiplied by zero, so that whole left side is zero. M1 is the person, so the mass of the person is 76 times two and a half. And then we got the mass of the boat, which has a mass of 45. And I need to find the final speed of two. 
Obviously everything over here on the left is zero, and so that equals all of this. Now I'm going to subtract the 76 times 2.5, so negative 76 times 2.5 is equal to 45 times the final velocity of object 2, which is the boat. And so now it doesn't figure too hard to tell. We're going to divide by 45, so 45 gets canceled out. And so our final velocity of the boat, that I already have up here on the calculator, so bringing this in, uh, this is the negative 76 times 2 and a half, so we got a negative 190 divided by 45. Looks like we got a final speed of the boat of negative 4.2 meters per second. That has to be negative because it's going off to the left, because that was what our picture was. If we drew our picture backwards, we would have had to been careful about putting a negative 2 and a half in for the speed, and then we would have gotten a positive 4.2 meters per second. So our final answer here is 4.2 meters per second. So that's your first conservation and momentum application. We're going to be taking a look at some more here in just a moment. There are three types of different collisions when you study momentum interactions. The first of those types is called an elastic collision. So an elastic collision means the objects stay, stay separate. Kinetic energy is conserved in an elastic collision. Perfectly inelastic collisions mean the objects stick together. Now kinetic energy is not conserved because of deformation, sound, heat, all kinds of other things that are hard to take account of using conservation of energy equation. It's not like it's not conserved, it is, it's just hard to account for. In elastic collisions, on the other hand, objects are going to remain separate. Deformations can occur, and because deformations occur, kinetic energy is not conserved. So here we have a little diagram of our different interactions. So perfectly inelastic, we're going to stick together. In elastic, we're going to be moving separately. Uh, so in this case, you have two balls bouncing off of each other. And in an elastic collision, they're going to be moving separately, but there's deformations and things like that. The only one where both of them are conserved are elastic collisions. So let's take a look at some sample problems. There's no real change on how we do this. Our first problem from page 213, we have two cars. One is a sedan, one is a compact car, which you see I have labeled as MC and MS for compact and sedan. Mass is given, speed's given. The compact car is going to collide with the sedan. They're going to stick together, so this is a perfectly inelastic collision. We want to know what is the velocity of the entangled mass afterwards. So here we have our conservation of energy. The two cars are separate at the beginning. They're combined at the end. We need to figure out what VF is. So plugging information in, I know the mass of all the cars, I've called M1, I wasn't very consistent about this. Mass 1 was the compact car, mass 2 is the sedan. So I plug the numbers in, the initial speed of the sedan is 0, so this whole term right here that I'm circling is 0. And then we got our combined masses here at the end because they're stick together, we're going to find VF. Then 975 times 22 remains at the top, and I need to divide by 1850. And that's going to equal our final speed, and I got a final speed of 7.6. Again, you should do these calculations, see if you get a similar answer. Page 214, different type of question, but it's really the same basic thing. This time we're looking at kinetic energy. So we have two clay balls, which I have done red and green. The mass of the red ball is a half a kilogram. The mass of the green ball is a quarter of a kilogram. The red ball is going to the right at four meters per second. The green ball is going to the left at three meters per second. So they're heading towards each other. They're going to collide. It says in an inelastic collision. And what we want to know is the decrease in kinetic energy during the collision. That sounds kind of vague but we got to find some stuff out. So decrease in kinetic energy just means well, what's the change in kinetic energy? So that's the final minus the initial kinetic energy. Well, I can do the initial kinetic energy pretty easy because I know all the information about the two balls in the beginning. So that's just one half mv squared for both of them. And so the mass of the red ball, the initial speed of the red and green balls. So one half red ball is 0.5 times four. Green ball, one half times 0.25 times negative 3 squared. It doesn't really matter if the negative is there or not, but I put it in just to be consistent. And so I got an initial kinetic energy of 5.125. Now the final kinetic energy isn't known, so we have to find that final velocity just like we did in our final problem. So we're going to use conservation of energy. Conservation of energy. We have m1 and m2. They're moving separately. So I have a mass of 0.5 times 4. Make sure you plug in that negative 3 over here. This is going in the opposite direction. It's conservation of momentum. And so that's going to equal the two masses added up because it's a perfectly inelastic collision. They stick together, find the final speed. So this time, there wasn't anything that was zero, so the numerator stays the same. I divide over the 0.5 times the 0.25. And when I did that, I got a final speed of 1.7 meters per second. So now I know information to find the final kinetic energy. 
The final kinetic energy is one half mv squared, while the mass is the combined masses because they're now one object because they have stuck together. So 0.5 plus 0.25. And then the final speed, this answer was really 1.6 repeating. I rounded it off to 1.7. So I put in a couple of sixes and a seven there in the end so as to not introduce rounding error too much. And so our final kinetic energy is 1.04. This means that we can now apply delta Ke, so that's the final minus initial kinetic energies. And I've already calculated the initial. The final kinetic energy is 1.04 that I just got, minus 5.125, and that gives me a negative 4.08 joules. For your homework problem tonight that I will answer tomorrow, because I'm tired of making this video already because I've had to restart three times, um, this is actually a sample problem. It's on page 217 of your textbook. Here it is. Try to work it out by yourself before you look at the answer in the book. Again, the book is posted in the file section of Teams, and we'll have a video posted tomorrow of this solution.